Jesus died to save the entire world. Today, he's training us in grace so that we can go out and influence someone else's life. That's why I'm so grateful for the friends and partners of this ministry who freely and cheerfully give financial offerings to support us. You understand our vision and you help us in so many ways to reach those who are searching for hope in the midst of darkness. Thank you for empowering us to expand God's kingdom worldwide. Your financial donations into this ministry work all over the world to change countless lives. If you'd like to support our efforts to save the lost, you may call in or visit CrefloDollarMinistries.org today. God bless you. My giving is a response to God's ability to take care of me. My giving is my declaration of dependence on God. God is committed to my care. Now, I want you to look at this scripture. Very, This is amazing. In Isaiah 46, verses 3 through 13 in the NLT. Follow me with this. Isaiah 46, verse 3 through 13 in the NLT. And somebody said, why are you sharing these scriptures? Because I'm never going to leave the word. I'm never going to leave the Word. I was saved by this Word. Uh, I was delivered by this Word. I ain't never going to get so deep in God that I don't need His Word. Everything tapping I do will be done within the boundaries of God's Word, we, and, and including Rhema. Listen, I'm going to hear from God while I'm in the Word. I'm going to hear from God while I'm in the Word. I'm not leaving the Word. And as long as I'm passing this church, you ain't leaving the Word either. We gonna stick with the Word. We sticking with the Bible. There's still stuff to discover from the Scripture Jesus wept. Now watch this. Listen to me, descendants of Jacob. All you who remain in Israel, I have cared for you since you were born. Yes, I carried you before you were born. Wow, that's deep. I carried you before you were born. I will be your God throughout your lifetime until your hair is white with age. I made you, and I will care for you. Oh, my goodness. I will carry you along and save you. To whom will you compare me? Who is my equal? It sure ain't money. Who is my equal? Some people pour out their silver and gold, and they hire a craftsman to make a god from it. Then they bow down and they worship it. They carry it around on their shoulders. You know what they're talking about, that golden calf? And when they set it down, it stays there. It can't even move. And when someone prays to it, there is no answer. It can't rescue anyone from trouble. My God. Do not forget this. Keep it in mind. Remember this, you guilty ones. Remember the things I have done in the past. Oh, somebody need to have a flashback. You need to remember what God has already done for you in the past. For I was alone, for I alone am God. I am God and there is none like me. Only I can tell you the future before it even happens. Everything I plan will come to pass, for I do whatever I wish. I will call a swift bird of prey from the east a leader from a distant land to come and do my bidding. I have said what I would do, and I will do it. Listen to me, you stubborn people who are so far from doing right, for I am ready to set things right, not in the distant future, watch this, but right now, but right now. 
But right now, I declare in the name of Jesus that that rain that we told you this morning has already begun to fall. It's not going to fall. It's already raining. You might not be able to see it, but it's already raining. You might not be getting wet, but it's already raining. God is about to do some things right now. He's about to do some right now success. He's about to turn some things around right now. He's about to open some doors right now. He's about to show you how big he is right now. He's about to get rid of your enemies right now. Hey, glory to God. And everything that's going on right now in the Middle East, take this as a prophetic word. He says, I don't care what it looked like, I'm ready to save Jerusalem and show my glory to Israel. My goodness. Giving is hard to do when you're not sure that God can take care of you. Why is it so hard to give? Because I'm not sure that God can take care of me. I'm not sure that God can take care of me. I remember years ago, I, <clears throat> one of my relatives came over and the Lord spoke to me. He said, I want you to give him that favorite suit of yours with that purple stripe. Here's what I did. I went up to the closet, was getting ready to get that suit, and I saw six suits or five suits. I said, I tell you what, I'm going to give him five suits. So I came down, and I had five suits. I said, hey, look at him, what? Five suits. He responded kind of nonchalant like, oh, okay. And I'm like, what? Okay. I, I'm going to give you five suits. You, oh, okay. And I went back upstairs, God said, that's not what I told you to do. I said, all right. I pulled that suit out, the one with the purple stripe that I ain't seen since. I came down, I couldn't get down the steps good, and he saw that, he said, oh, wow, bro, now that's what I'm talking about. I'm like, just shut up, take the suit, just hush. It was hard for me to give because I wasn't sure that God would take care of me. But when I did that, a man called me and said, I want to make, I ain't never had no tailor-made soup before in my life. My suit was so cheap, I, I literally started preaching out of it. I looked down and the threads started coming apart. <laughs> Some of y'all remember that? And, and it was coming apart that way, that way. I thought my tail was showing after a while. <laughs> And, 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 and they, they eased me out, covered me up, and I walked out right there real quick. <laughs> but when you are sure, when you are sure that God can take care of you, giving is no longer a hard thing to do. Look at Romans chapter 8, 32. NLT. Somebody says, well, I didn't know I was going to hear a message on finances. I'm not, that's, see, that's what I'm saying. That's not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about who will you trust? You keep, you keep, you keep thinking the issue is money, and I'm, and I'm saying the issue is trust. Romans 8.32 in the NLT. Someone says, why do you scream like that? I get excited. I am not mad or angry at anybody. I am just so excited. I, I want to do cartwheels, but I might spring something. I, I don't, I just, I want to run, but I don't want my back to be hurting after I finish, looking like I got the Holy Ghost and then going home, talking about, oh, tapping my back. You know what I'm saying? I'm just so excited. I'm excited that, that we, have, we are figuring the devil out and he's not going to be able to deceive us anymore and, he, and he's not going to trick us no more. 
and we're going to deal with the, the hard issues. We're going to deal with the controversial issues because we are going to be ready for whatever he got to throw at us. Bring it on, devil. You want to dance? We're going to dance because we depend on God. We have declared a declaration of dependence upon the almighty God. He will not fail us. He will not leave us. He will not. 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 If my baby need a pair of shoes, God got it. Hallelujah. Look, you got a light bill due. He'll help me pay the light bill. If you lose your job and you got a gas bill too, depend on Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I know. When we were building this building, Oh, what was it? We needed so much money at a certain time or they were going to stop the, 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 the construction and then it takes a bunch to get the construction up again. And the Lord said, how much do you have in the account? I said, we have 700 and some thousand dollars in the account. I thought he was going to do something. He said, I want you to take that money and I want you to give it to another ministry that's building the building. I said, <laughs> I said, Lord, that means that mean we won't have no money. Like God needed a math lesson from me. <laughs> Glory to God. So I, I called up a guy in Sacramento, and he was building a church, and I said, Lord told me to do this, and, and so we'll, we'll be sending it to you. And uh, I said, all right, Lord. Um, <laughs> so we were taking an offering up one day, and my wife said, the Lord told me to give my whole check. And I'm thinking, hey, girl, we got bills to pay. <laughs> and then other people came up and started doing the same thing. And then folks started running to their house. And then we got pictures of it. Then money started flying in the air. People were throwing it from the balcony. We had to get umbrellas so nobody would get injured with them coins. <laughs> How many of y'all were here at that meeting when it took place? Oh my goodness. I don't know when he multiplied it. I don't know when it was flying through the air or when they were counting it. Oh, I know. As when it was said and done, we had enough to not only finish what we started, but we moved in a building that was not just prayed for, but it was paid for because God demonstrated I will take care of you. Yeah. Romans 8, 32, he says, since he did not spare even his son, but gave him up for us all. He gave Jesus up for all of us. He gave the most valuable thing heaven had for everybody. He said, now, if I did that, won't he also give us everything else? And you begging God for a car. He says, I gave you my son. But, Lord, what about my rent? I gave you my son. Oh. But, Lord, what about my baby need to pass you? I gave you my son. You can trust my son. You, you, you thinking the only thing you can trust is God. No, you can trust my son. I was preaching in the Baptist church, and, and, and during those days, they, they had the chairs in the pulpit. And during prayer time, all the preachers who were on the pulpit would turn around and kneel and pray, and your shoes would go up. Well, when I got down and put my shoes up, I had holes all in my shoes. When I knew it was going to rain, I put the plastic over my sock 
and then put a sock over that and then put my shoes on. I needed to know that I could trust God to give me some shoes. It'd be raining sometimes and I get them calluses out of my feet because my, my, you know, the plastic, I didn't know it had a hole in it, so the water. <laughs> and those are days where you just mix and match everything. One day I wear the bottom pants with a different coat, and then I'd wear the coat that went with the pants with the pants that went with the coat. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to multiply from two suits to four. And then I buy a jacket to mix it all up with that and then mix it with a tie. Because I need to know the God I was about to give my whole life to. Because when you go into ministry, you give your whole life. You don't go to the ministry and, and, and well, if, if, a, if 100 people don't show up, I'm going to quit. If, if, if but five people show up, I gave him my whole life. I need to know if you can take care of me, God. I was a servant playing the piano one night. Angels will be singing, but I was tired. My feet were tired. The pastor called, he said, you're coming back to evening service. I said, no, sir. <laughs> I, I don't believe in saying, well, I'll try, because I believe I'll try is like an honest lie. You know you ain't coming. <laughs> so I told him, I'm not, I'm not coming. He said, why? I said, I'm tired. <laughs> he said, well, son, because he knew what was going to happen that night. He said, son, please, just, if you can just come tonight, okay? I said, oh, boy. All right. So we had to sing that night. Ooh, I had a big attitude. I was about to mess it up. <laughs> I'm up there. I beat that piano <laughs> like a rug that had dust in it. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Sat down there pouting because my feet hurt. And I'm wondering, is this, can this God take care of me? I sat there, and after a while they said, could Reverend Dollar come to the front? And I'm thinking, what, what do you want now? <laughs> I mean, I cut the grass yesterday. <laughs> you know, I, I did church this morning. What, what do y'all want now? What you trying to kill me? What you want now? <laughs> And then they walked out there and they had this suit bag and they had this bag of thing. I said, uh oh. <laughs> oh my God. And they pulled the shoebox out. And the first thing I saw, I'm like, there go my shoes. <laughs> God, you gave me my shoes. Now, that may not mean nothing to nobody here today, but to me, that sealed the deal. Yeah. That if God can give me my shoes, I can give him my life. I can trust him for anything now. He will take care of me. Hallelujah. He will take care of me. But you know what? He's going to take care of you right now. Some of you need to understand that everything that's happening right now in your life, that's God taking care of you right now. That's God carrying you right now. That's God working it out right now. You don't even know why you called the IRS and they said we can't find no bill. You sure you owe the government something? Well, the bill say this. Well, I don't know what to tell you. We ain't got nothing in our computers that say you owe nothing. Honey, that ain't nothing but God taking care of you. If you can have faith in Jesus being given to you, then you will be successful in navigating through hard times or challenges, and you will have some difficult times. But you got to remember Romans 8:32. he gave me Jesus. 
Whatever confronts your life, you must encounter your dependence. Whatever confronts your life must encounter, must encounter your dependence upon God as your source. Whatever confronts you, you got to let that, you got to let whatever confronts you know God is my source. Whatever confronts you, you got to let it know God takes care of me. Your trust in God will cause you to be successful. I said your trust in God will cause you to be successful. I said your trust in God will cause you to be successful. Look at Psalms 50. Psalms 50, verse 7 through 15 in NLT. Psalms 50, verse 7 through 15 in NLT. I ain't trying to be complicated. I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to be complicated. It, it, it would do nobody no good if I came up here and complicated you and gave you something that made you say, ooh, ah, and then when you walk out of here, you have no idea how to practically uh, apply it to your life. Oh, my people, listen as I speak. Here are my charges against you, O Israel. I am God, your God. I have no complaint about your sacrifices or the burnt offerings you constantly offer, but I do not need the bulls from your barns, nor do I need the goats from your pens. For all the animals of the forest are mine. You know what God is talking about now? See, you think God needs your money. God, like, I don't need nothing from you. I don't need nothing from you. For all the animals of the forest are mine. And I own the cattle of a thousand hills. I know every bird on the mountains. And all the animals of the field are mine. I love this. If I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you. For all the world is mine, and everything in it is mine. Do I eat the meat of bulls? Do I drink the blood of goats? Make thankfulness your sacrifice to me. Keep the vow you made to the Most High God. Then call on me when you're in trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will give me glory. This thought that God needs you to be God. God doesn't need you to be God. Anything God's asking you to do, he's asking you to do it for your benefit, not his. And if 2,000 and some scriptures are trying to get us to open our eyes to see that he's committed to take care of you and that he's, and he wants you to learn how to depend on him and you think it's, it's, it's about my money, that preacher, well, look, listen to this devilish slogan. All preachers want is your money. But they won't say all Kroger's wants is your money. Because the fact of the matter is all Kroger's wants is your money. You don't believe me? Go shop at Kroger's after church today. And when you get to line and they say, you know, uh, uh, 100 and, uh, 100, $115, please, you say, no, you, you're just you're concerned about me benefiting with the food. Security, <laughs> they don't care not about no benefit or no food. All they care is about your money coming out your pocketbook paying for what you just took off the shelf. But it's another mammon slogan to get you to thinking that somehow this thing called money is to be trusted more than you trust God. <laughs>